ready to start here. Uh, my name's Kevin Bailey in the booth here with uh, Cincinnati senior, Kev Skiba. Kev Duo back at it again. Yeah. Excited to be uh, commentating this game. I think it might be a good one. Kevin, what do you think? Oh, yeah, I absolutely think so. Back in February when they played Cleveland State, it was a very close game. It was a 3-2 game, I believe. And uh, Saginaw Valley won that, correct? Yes. Yeah, I'm excited to see. Um, it, it's like a tale of two, two very different stories here. With Miami has been a team that, as they push up here to the throw line, they're a team that has really ascended as the season has gone on. Meanwhile, Saginaw Valley has kind of kind of struggled down the stretch. They lost uh, a couple games to Western Michigan uh, in the winter, um, second half of the season. So. They're one of those teams that kind of was reeling a little bit going into nationals, whereas Miami, despite their record, they're a team that has really impressed people. Oh yeah, this team is young. They are hungry, looking for this big win. This would be big if they can get this win today. And can Ooh. you can you walk the audience through a couple players on Miami to, to keep an eye on them, maybe some of the top arms? Absolutely, so a couple key, couple key arms for this team, I would say uh, number 10. Cole, I have no idea how to pronounce that. I know it's an Italian name. Cole Ginocchio, I believe, could be wrong. I believe so, he is definitely their best player. He's got a big arm. He can also catch really well. You see him on that far left side. He's been one of their main guys thrown so far this game. You can tell he, he helps dictate the pace of the game there, pushing up and back for Miami on that side. Oh yes. Who else would you highlight on, on the uh, Red Hawks roster? Uh, Someone who I feel is underrated. I'm not sure if he's actually doesn't look like he's here today actually. But um, I'm gonna say because nah, I'm gonna say number eight, the sophomore Max Edling. Yeah. Yep, I've seen his name mentioned a lot um, as one of, the, one of the guys that's impressed really uh, throughout this year. And then just to jump to Saginaw side. Uh, you've got a couple household names on this team. Joe Barber, he's a guy that's been around for a long time. Uh, Bryce Stevens, number 21 in the middle there. You see him get a ball. Uh, he's Ooh, that was a big team, though, leader. taking out number 19. Yeah, nice job there. And then Cole Michela, keep an eye on him, number 31. Really good transition player for them, really quick, athletic. Uh, has a great arm, though, as well. Right now, we, we, we aren't seeing a super fast-paced game. It, it sort of feels like both teams are feeling out the other team, feeling out what the the pace of the game really is as we have a ball come our way. Cool. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely been a couple months since these two teams have played each other. So right now they're just doing slow paces, trying to fill each other out. It looks like you got Bryce Stevens up there in the middle just trying to dictate the pace. For the Miss on the team throw. I'm seeing, I'm pretty impressed with the way they see how comfortable they are on the back line. And I think part of that, Evan, is playing against teams with some power arms, such as your own team, Cincinnati. You've also got Ohio State. They're a really strong team in the Ohio region. Miami's a battle-tested battle team, so but they look mm -hmm. so comfortable even on that back line, maybe with only a couple balls on their side. That's yeah, they, great, they great. definitely held their own against some of the tough Ohio teams, like Ohio State, Ohio. They were uh, either tied or trailing a little in half, but then they just couldn't keep the momentum. So I want to see if they can be able to keep that momentum going into the second half. Number 13, Smith there with the throw. Good throw from him uh, as Saginaw pushes back up to the front line. Again, both these teams seem comfortable playing a little bit slower pace, and, and they're just trusting their arms, right? They're trusting their arms, they're trusting their catching, uh, and their ability to move back in transition. Team throw, takes on Ellie Schieffer. That's a big catch. Yeah, a big catcher for this team. Yep, not only that, but she's also a vocal leader, and some of that definitely helps with, you know, their communication on the court, right? So that's that's a key person to get out for two. That was uh, John Kevin Rick with the block with the Steven throw. Oh, and there's oh. a kill. Nice throw there by 19. I believe that's Folsom uh, for Saginaw. Nope. I believe that's who that was. Uh, a rookie for Saginaw Valley. He was. He was, uh, I believe, the last one alive against um, 
Michigan State, I believe it was, at the Michigan Dodgeball Cup in a, in a moment that really could have swung the momentum in Saginaw's favor. He didn't get it, uh, but he, he had an incredible performance in that game. It was a big hit from Cole Michela. Took out Ben Albrecht. Top. Team throw. Wow. Great team for Saginaw. I, I'm not used to seeing this good a team for Saginaw. This is looking like some throwback teams from the early 2010. Saginaw was one of the best teams in the country. The way they're pushing up together and communicating is, is, is top notch right now. Oh, Home that's, that's hits. a big hit. Old Ginocchio taking out Joe Barber. Just wow. snuck by the block. Yeah, nice job by him. He's another sophomore from the day. So you, you were not kidding when you said this team is young. Oh, yeah, they only have two graduating this year. A lot of sophomores. And a catch. Oh, what a catch. Oh, what a catch. Okay, so we got a kill there, but also the catch does count. Cole Ginocchio again. And they're calling him out. I don't know if there was a team throw and one of the, one of the balls hit him. We'll have to get I, clarification I mean, on that too. I'm not sure. Team throw. Just misses. Connects on the other side. And oh, and he gets the hit. That was DJ Goodwin, the junior, and that's going to be the first point. Saginaw with a pretty convincing first point. Yeah, six minutes went by. Uh, it started pretty slow. Saginaw did seem to take control there. They felt a little bit more comfortable, it seems like, in transition. Um, but their, their top arms really stepped up there and, and connected on more throws, whereas Miami, fine in transition, but it seemed like a lot more of their throws were resetting the shot clock, not, maybe not quite aggressive enough. You've got to be able to trust your arms, especially at Nationals. This is the biggest stage here. Cross your arms and make those plays. Don't just go for the reset. You can't play too conservative here because that, that also will put you in a tough spot. So it's a learning it's a learning curve for a young team like Miami, but we'll see how they uh, respond here in point number two. I think one thing that they can improve on that since they are more comfortable on that back line, throw a quick counter and get back. They know they're comfortable there. Yeah. I, I agree with what you're saying. I, you lo I, I lost my train of thought. Yeah, so I, I, I agree with you that if they're on their back, the missing the missing link there is getting those kills. Yeah, yeah like, and, and, that and that was a, right there. That was a good example. Max Edling with a quick counter staying on their back line. They know they're comfortable there. Good wall ball by Cole Michela. Yep, and you're going to see that for the audience at home. Uh, some ooh, some venues have more uh, of a bounce back uh, issue than others. This one's got walls pretty close, so that is going to be a factor in this game more than uh, at some other venues. But we'll see how both teams react to that. So Miami with three balls, Saginaw with seven. Oh, what a catch, just snagged that. Kristen Baller, uh, number one there for Saginaw Valley. He's, he's an experienced guy. He's been around since before uh, the COVID pandemic, and he's, he's been a top guy for them for years. And actually, he was not in attendance at Michigan Dodgeball Cup, uh, and that might have played a pretty big factor, I think, in, in them losing to Western Michigan. Wow, oh. there's a couple kills. Big hit by Joe Barber there. So Miami with looks like about eight players left. Saginaw looking like they have 11. Oh, and Crawler trying to look for that catch. He just misses it. I believe that was another wall ball there by Michaela. Oh, that oh that's going to be a kill. Number 81 goes down for, uh, for Miami. That's Ryan Williams. That was a great throw by Kyle Krupp, the senior, number 15. Oh, that's an easy catch with Park Mega there. Wow. And, and right now, Miami is in, in a crucial point here where Saginaw could take complete control of this game here if Miami doesn't step up a little bit and maybe turn the tide here at this point. This could become 2-0 early in this game. And, and Saginaw oh, follows momentum. There's a hit. Okay, Danielle Kub goes down on that one. Uh, Saginaw still, I think they've got 11 players left. Um, so 12 on 12, and you've got 11. 
Oh, Bryce Stevens, you've got to pay attention there. Oh, that's a catch. Is that going to be a catch? That's going to, that's going to. Yeah, I think that was a catch. It brings oh, and a hit. Brings in arguably Miami's top player, Cole Ginocchio. Yeah, that was a big play there by number three, Jason Zepua. The Jimmy Lock. You, you can see the inexperience on, on the court for Miami, but at the same time, the talent, right? The talent's there, they just need that valuable experience. Looks like it's gonna be right side, close side here, looking to reset. Ooh, if I was Ginocchio right there, I'd look at Joe Barber. He was not looking for, for any cross throw. Saginaw now push into the back line. They've, they've spent most of the game up at their throw line. Uh, let's see how they react to being back here. They only got three balls on their side. Now. If I'm Miami right now, I look for the weaker link. I don't even pay attention to Joe Marlins. He's their best catcher by far. Okay, so yeah, so it's so your strategy in this situation for Miami, you want to get them down to the 10 count yes. at all costs mm -hmm. and maybe knock off some of the weaker players. Oh, that's a nice. catch. Nice catch by him. I didn't sure, I wasn't sure if he was going to be able to react to that time, but he, oh, oh and there, there he goes hit. down. That's a huge play for Miami. I think that was number one, Leo Ambrose, who's also a junior. Part right with the reset. Do you know if you the game still? Uh, yeah, Ginocchio still being in the game could be a huge momentum swing if he starts popping off here. Yeah, and an interesting nuance to NCAA style. Oh, and there's a drop. Edling almost with a huge oh. play. An, an interesting part of this big court style of play in, in 12 on 12 is once it gets down to a few players on each side, that's a kill. Oh, that's a cross. Great cross by Bryce Steve. Yeah, nice kill. Uh, to finish that thought, when it gets down to a few players, it's a completely different skill set. And being a good end of point player is a huge skill to have. And I think that that's something that uh, Ginocchio, number 10 in Miami, a sophomore, but still, he looks so comfortable out there. I think that he's going to he's gonna be a weapon even late in, in point where there's only a few players left. Mm -hmm. Some people have that skill set, some don't. Good block by Ginocchio. Yeah, Miami is on the ping pong. They do have... Yeah, four players left. Oh, oh trying wow. to go for that catch, but and there's a kill though. Ben Felt goes down after making a kill. Um, so pretty much a trade there, but you don't have to that down to three guys. Sagging on me mile with six. One more and they're on the down. Oh and there ball. it is. And a big player kill there. Tristan oh. Ball. Five on three now, so Miami. Now now an interesting spot. Both teams are now on the ten count. And like, look at these guys in for Saginaw. These are not their best players. Great point. You've got you've got some of the younger players in for Saginaw. So that's a tough night. Throw there. Okay, you still got two of Miami's best players in. You've got Ginocchio and you've got Zeppelo. Good, good idea there by him. He was looking for the catch, but when it was out of his reach. He just dropped down. He didn't. He didn't force himself to make a play that wasn't there for him. Mm -hmm. Long throw here. Great spot. Great spot. And you see that that pinch throw from Ginobili. Wow. That's a dip oh. on it. And it's just really good movement on his throw. That makes it so much tougher to catch. Oh, what a dodge by Zeppelin right there. Yeah, team throw does not connect. But I love the idea by Zeppelin. Even now, I might think about doing another if they get uh, a ball advantage back. Oh, I believe that's a catch off his foot into his hand. Off his foot into yes, his hand, yes. and they're calling it a catch. What a play. Allen, number 13 for Saginaw Valley. Probably the best play he's made in his career. I think he's a rookie. Yeah, I'm not sure. And there it is. Oh. Saginaw, right when it looked like the momentum was about to flip, and a huge play by number 13 for Saginaw Valley. Coming up clutch. Still, still anyone's game. Still early. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Going a 2-0 game. 12, 12 minutes left on the clock. 
While we got a break here, Kevin, let's talk about uh, some of the best games you've seen today and also how is Cincinnati doing? Yeah, so I definitely feel like probably the best game we've probably seen today is that last one against Penn State, Ohio State. They took, Ohio State took a big lead, 3-0 at the half, but then Penn State just became a well-oiled machine, four points in a row, and they were down to one guy left with one minute, and he survived. Yep, it was an awesome game. Love that that was on the feature court as well. A lot of our viewers probably watched that one and would stay tuned in for this one as well. Um, fantastic game. Uh, and again, for all of the viewers at home, we're on day one of Nationals. This is this is uh, not exactly pool play. Uh, it's sort of just uh, each each team has three games today. And three games against uh, a somewhat balanced schedule in terms of everyone has about the same difficulty of schedule. And we have a false start here. Um, after, after the rounds are done today, uh, we got two more rounds after this. Uh, we'll collect the scores and we'll have the final seedings. In fact, you, if you go to ncdadodgeball.com slash live, you can watch any of the courts. And then also on that page, you'll be able to find uh, the live score update uh, and live bracket updates. So you can see what the bracket would look like right now if we stop playing right at this moment. We've obviously got more games to play. Uh, but you can see those updated standings um, in day two, Championship Sunday, bracket play for all the marbles. That's what we've been uh, waiting for all year, and that's what all of these schools have been uh, practicing and training all year long for. So can't wait to see how it plays out. Um, again, we're in round four of six here. We got two more uh, rounds of games after this one uh, as the refs here try and figure out what the stoppage was and, and what the final call is going to be. Well, I talked about my favorite game that has happened so far. What has been yours so far? Yeah, it's tough. So I, I've had the pleasure of working with our, our partners, Mad City uh, production crew. They're going to be, um, they're putting together a lot of stuff for us, a lot of content, and we've been doing interviews. So I've actually, I've missed a good handful of the first half of games, at least. Of the ones that I've seen, Penn State, Ohio State stands out. That's the obvious one. Uh, JMU Michigan State it didn't end up being that close of a final score, but a great game, two, two very, very good teams. Uh, so that's another one, and I'm just gonna go out on a limb and say the next matchup here on the featured court, Ohio State against Grand Valley State, is gonna be one of my favorite ones. I think that that's two great teams. Um, Ohio State coming off a heartbreaker, obviously, but still battling for, for a seed at Nationals. And, and after, after losing that game, they're in a tough spot. Their, their seed is dropping, and if they lose to Grand Valley, it's going to drop even more. They need they need to bounce back quick in Grand Valley on the other side. Right now, they're the number two team. So they've bumped up in the standings, so it'll be, it'll be a huge swing one way or the other, depending on how that game goes. Quick hit off the rush, taking out John Kevin Rick. I think that was yep. uh, 33 Goodman. Uh, and Edling goes down. You, you can tell he's one of their leaders as well, even, even as a sophomore. Mm -hmm. um, looks like Saginaw is going to come up. Bela Waldo. Really, really impressed with what I've seen from Saginaw so far after the way that the last couple of months have gone. Losing some games to teams that they generally beat and generally beat well. So to see them bounce back at Nationals, great to see. Then again, we got a lot of games. This, this could go either way. Ooh. What a block there by Goodwin. Taking the key there. Pull Michele, Michele with the throw in the middle there. Uh, doesn't connect. That was a middle. rather high wall ball. I'm not sure if that should have pounded. Stevens with a quick reset throw. Now they're going to creep. Going to play more transition. That's what they're comfortable with. Smith with a reset. Nothing there. Oh. Go Barber. Another big hit.
Another throw. To Ooh. Nice hard throw there. Even better stop by Michaela there. Been out under 10 minutes to go in the half. Uh, Miami did not want to drop the point and go down 3-0. Then again, we just thought team come back from that deficit last game. Hey, anything happens in this sport. No matter if you're down two, three, anything can happen. Ooh, barely missed, barely. Yeah, it seemed like Albert caught a lucky break there. Ginocchio oh. just made it. Look for a catch and he dropped it, so that is a huge swing. Not in Miami's favor. Down to six to Miami again. We need someone to make a play. They're going to have one more 15. They are down to five players now. Now they're going to be on the tank now. Coming up, Stevens with the throw. Great dodge there. And the cut is too high, but they get the bounce back. So you're looking at second about a huge ball advantage right now. No shot clock for Miami. They only have two balls on their side. That's a new rule here in the NCAA. Saginaw pushes up. Team throw does not connect, but they get both back again. They are comfortable playing an offensive game right now. Something you don't usually see from this Saginaw team. Oh, uh, team throw, no good there. I think what happened there is when they were both throwing, their balls hit each other. And that's why it looked a little awkward. And in that case, that means dead ball. Neither would have counted anyway. Ooh, I don't know about that single throw. Yep, U.S. ball advantage. You want to get them down to that no clock, and you want to set up some team throws. They're going to have a team throw. Close side here. Ooh, great dodges. A dodge. And a dodge. So did she stay in? She did. Ooh. Yep. So remember, we have soft boundary to this, which means you, as long as you have one point of contact in bounce, you're in. Uh, so stepping out with just one toe doesn't count as getting out. Um, the benefit of that is that you see less games or points end because someone can step in the bounce. One, two, three. Team throw, you see. Comes. No good there. 81 again. Great job dodging. Ryan Williams. For Miami. Four players left. We get some of Miami's better players left. I would say. Mm -hmm. Still got a chance to come back here. Long throw there. Barber doesn't connect. Far side. Yep. Step over the reset. Stevens with his own reset. Good block. Ryan Williams. Oh, and there's a kill. Nice throw. That's a big gift from Miami, taking out one of their leaders. Good try there. See if, I, if I'm Ryan Williams here, I push up with two balls. I want to have one in each hand. And that way, after I throw, I still have a ball to block. Yeah. He seems comfortable with just one. He doesn't know he has one in the corner. He's a call for the ball. Uh, team throw. No good again. Second is having a lot of trouble trying to get him out. Six minutes now in the half. Oh, and Pearson falls oh. over the line. Just went all out for that ball, and it ended up being too aggressive. Very unfortunate. Team throw coming up. It looks like. Just a solo. Oh, another block by Williams. He's hanging in tough. Good reset. No, that was a good spot. Nice team throw. Team throw. And there they finally get it. Took a while, but there it is. Oh, 
Ellie Schneifer. Uh, is that the correct way to pronounce her last name? Yes, I believe so. Yeah, so she still is going to be a really smart player here. Oh! And, wow, Barber goes down. Barber goes down. What a hit by Katie Williams. Oh, yeah, Schneifer. She is looking for that kind Yeah, and she's known as a great type. And I think that Saginaw knows that. They've seen the scouting report, right? And I think we have a... Uh, Balls out. I'm not sure what the stoppage. Oh no, they're just. They're, I think there was stoppage and that ball comes in. So Miami still with three players left. They got a chance. At the very least, stay alive for the rest of this half. Going to halftime only down 2-0. Oh, that's so much more manageable. Mm -hmm. with three. Even then, with three people trying to kill off five minutes, it's not going to be easy. Yeah, that's a long time to uh, stay alive. <laughs> Um, let's see here. It's a long time to stay alive and a lot of decent guys. Still, still uh, figuring it out with the rest here. Dragon on Valley, let me take a look at how they've done so far today. Do you know off the top of your head? Um, all I know is that you see people running 2 1, 5 to 1. Pushing up here. Oh, oh that's little, bad communication. Is that what you were thinking? Yeah, no, that was definitely. Oh! Oh, oh Zeppelin goes down. Two left. Oh, catch. that's a catch. That's huge. Katie Williams with a catch that brings in number 11, Rick. A couple massive plays from her this point. Hey, you don't, you don't see many women's players on, on some of these teams. They're more in the women's division, but both of them right now stepping up, making huge plays, staying alive. And, and right now, this is either team's point. It's three and four now, and you're seeing the way that, that I is catching. Walk there, number 11. John Kevin Rick. So they got one ball. I expect the team throw on the far side. This would be a massive, massive swing for Miami. Yeah, I'm, yeah, no. I'm not sure why Saginaw's retreating. Miami has no count. They have to set up a team throw. The communication's falling off a little bit with some of their leaders not on the court. Oh, that's a hit. Schaefer goes down. It's a big hit. Yep. She, she made a good play there trying to get out of the way of the first one and then go for a catch on the other one, but just didn't, didn't make the catch. Another team throw. No! And... And she's trying to get clarification, I think. They're calling it out. Yeah, they're calling her out. So I think she thought the ball's connected in midair, which like we talked about earlier, if they hit midair, they're dead. They, don't, they can't hit the, the player at that point to the count. So, looks like the ref said it did not, that did not happen. We still got one guy left on here from Miami. If I'm him, I'm looking for a type at some point. You got 255. It's going to be tough to last that long by yourself. It's possible. Yeah. It's happened before, but it's no easy feat. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Crop long throw. Good spot. Yep. You, you could tell he was just going for a reset there. Now, another one. He's going to go more aggressive here. No. If I'm sagging, I'm doing either a team throw or getting him in transition. Mm -hmm. One of those two. Not this. Not a solo it, throw. It looks like they're just trying to get him in transition. Okay. Oh! oh yeah. here. Here goes down. That was two smart, left. smart play, though. She set him up. She set him up, baited him into that, and then just didn't make the catch. Timeout called. Timeout, so that ball goes oh. back to Miami, yeah. and now they have four or five on their side. Yeah, we got just over two minutes left. It's still a lot of time to stay alive if you're one guy. Uh, timeout was called there by which team? Uh, Miami. Okay, Miami with the timeout. I don't know if Miami has any more timeouts. They might have one left. Uh, scoreboard on screen for everyone at home. Uh... Yeah, so I think that was their first time out, so they'll go down to one. Oh, 
And here we go. Ooh, what a block. Again, John Kevin Rick, the last player left for Miami. Let's see what he can do here. He's, I like that he's not pushing himself up too far in the middle. And also, he goes up with two balls, so he always has one to block for himself here. And he's doing a really good job of playing some conservative. He's a lot. Mm -hmm. That's that experience. He is a senior. Oh, good look there by Croft. I, they're yeah. calling a kill. That's a kill. That's a, yep, yep. So that bounced off his ball, hit him in the foot, it looked like. So if that's the case, kill. He's out. And that'll take us to halftime, folks. 141 to go. That gets pushed over to the second half. 3-0 uh, score, Saginaw Valley in the lead. It's been a somewhat close game, though, I'd say. Uh, closer than this score, I think it is. If I sit right here, am I in it? I feel like Miami needs to be a little better at playing the game because they seem a little intimidated by the transition play. Because they're not exactly, even on the back line, they don't seem comfortable. Again, folks, halftime here. Saginaw Valley against Miami. Coming up next on this court, for those curious, we got heck of a game. Ohio State against Grand Valley State. Two teams ranked in the top four. Um, so that's going to be a great one. Also got Michigan State against Akron. That'll be on court two next round. Um, and then the final match of the day here on the featured court is Cincinnati against Ohio to uh, Ohio, uh, Ohio rivals. folks getting ready for the second half
again, huge, huge shout out to all the sponsors here for NCAA Nationals. You'll see them on the on the broadcast in the bottom left corner, uh, cycling through those logos. For all the NCAA fans out there, if you could uh, give each of those organizations maybe a follow, maybe give them some new business at some point, we would uh, we would appreciate it. And I'm sure they would as well. Second half here, getting ready to start. Uh, let's see if we can get some score updates from some other games here in Q4. Uh, looks like right now at halftime, James Madison leading Wisconsin Platteville three to zero. You got Maryland against Michigan State. Michigan State up 2-0 in that game. MSU right now is the number one team, I believe. Uh, we can take a look at that as well. Virginia with a 2-0 lead against Kent. Good for them. Uh, they're a team that hasn't been at Nationals since 2018. Um, so good to see them out here competing and competing well. And then you got Cleveland State with a 5-0 lead against North Georgia. Cleveland State's another team that struggles throughout the year. Kevin, you've seen it because you've been in in the Ohio tournaments, uh, you've seen the way that they've played throughout the year, but it's good to see that they're stepping it up here at Nashville. Yeah, absolutely. Some other uh, interesting scores from earlier in the game, in the day. Looks like we're about to start, so I'll make it quick. Nebraska with a 5-0 win against Ohio last round is huge. That shocked me. Yep, that's that's definitely a surprise. And here we go with the run-up. Uh, and a catch. Oh, and a catch. Yeah, so Miami. It's tough. I, I I don't know. If, I don't know if you need to, to go super aggressive here. If you're Miami, you still got 26 minutes. Um, but Cole Ginocchio, he went he went all out for the, for a kill early on in, in the point, and maybe didn't need to. Joe Barber pushing up one of the power arms for for Saginaw Valley. Uh, scary throw to be looking at. Oh yeah, he definitely got me in the shoulder uh, when we played them. Wow, what a catch um, there. Point. Yeah, that immediately brings back in Ginocchio. Yep, that's huge. And that is the number six, Ben Albrecht for Miami. Another sophomore, their sophomore class is loaded. Another fun thing with, with, with college basketball, this is when all the teams are in one place at the same time. This is when every, everyone really gets to get that gauge for where everyone stands. And part of that isn't just how they do for today and tomorrow, which we obviously are so interested in seeing how that plays out, but also for next year. And when it comes to, you know, the, the release of the way too early ranking, you talk about a team like Miami with so many young players that are stepping up and having key goals. This is a team that might find themselves a little bit higher in the rankings in the way too early rankings next year than where they are right now. You see a lot of promise throughout that roster. But back to the action here. Barbara with the throw doesn't connect. Well, he was just looking for that quick reset throw just to get back on the back line. The, the question is, does Miami have that firepower up on the front line to be able to compete with this team? I think he should. Nice block there by Adling. Oh, what a hit. Oh, and that's... that's And that, that was a huge catch there. Taking out one of, one of Miami's top arms. Now you see Miami back in that same situation. I think I think Miami right now, like they they are comfortable playing from the back line and they do have oh, good catches. That's a, that's a very bad mistake. They do three balls there. Just get up there. Gotta play a little smarter, a little more communication. I think the other thing is, Right now, like I said, with the firepower, oh, that's catch. a nice catch. That was Rick with the catch. Miami needs to needs to be more comfortable playing in transition and playing like front line. Right now, they're too much of a defensive team, and that can only get you so far. Oh, and Barber, they they do call out on that throw. Uh, so so once again, I feel like it's a. We've seen this every single point. Saginaw takes an early lead. Miami tries to fight back. They've got some good catches. They have the ability to do so, but they just can't quite get over the hump. We got a timeout. Timeout, Saginaw. And uh, we got a game here. We, we still got a lot, 
a lot of time left, 23 minutes and 19 seconds left here in the second half, and we got a quick stoppage. I'm not sure what they're discussing about. Um, We've got a moment here. Why don't I run us more through some more scores? Uh, last round, Wisconsin Plateau got a 3 2 win over Maryland. That's big for them. Oh, wow. That is a very big win. Cincy, the game that you were a part of, they Cincinnati beat Western 6 0, dominant win. Akron, 5 0 over Kent. That's expected as well. Oh, my goodness. Oh, okay. Never mind. I, I, I looked at the score wrong. So, so Virginia lost 5 2 to Ohio. Uh, they did have that game. Close but tied two to two at one point, I think. So good for Virginia. And a team throw there. Takes out a player from Miami, and now they're down to the 10 count. Ooh, nice block by the Taylor Judge. Look for a catch here. Oh, and that was it. That was their spot. Smith just missed that catch. Barber going up, makes the throw. He's got that sidearm release. It curves off to the left as a right-handed player. You curve it off to the left. So if you're facing that throw, it curves to your left. Oh, and that's a nice yeah. team throw. Looks like second. I was about to go up. player left. Up. 80 million. He's doing a great job getting low, getting out of the way of the throw. We'll see if Saginaw just makes some low throws here now. I would expect it. Good throw here. Still coming. Yes, sir. And that's the kill. 4 0 now. Saginaw Valley in the lead. This is the least close game that we've had on this court, I believe. Grand Valley six to one over Akron, I guess. Counts as well, but yeah, we are now going to have a running clock. Yep. Not four point lead. Yep. While we're here, let's take a look at the live seeds. Um. Yeah. So uh, right now, Cincinnati actually with the the number one seed, followed by Michigan State, Grand Valley at three, Ohio State at four, Penn State at five. Penn State jumping way up after that huge yeah, win against Ohio State. Yeah, jumped up a lot after that big win. Akron at six. They started the day at four. Uh, JMU at seven. They started the day a little bit higher. Expect them to go up after the last game when they get a win, assuming they get a win. Uh, Ohio down to eight. Um, and then UN, UNL at nine, so Nebraska. Mm -hmm. um, they just got a big win over Ohio. So that would be interesting to see them face off again tomorrow in eight, nine matchup. But there is still so much to go. And remember, Grand Valley against Ohio State, is coming up. They're three and four right now. One of those teams might go up. One of those teams is certainly going to go down. And I'm pretty sure Michigan State has only played one game so far today. You might they be correct on that. I, I think you can expect Michigan State. No, they played game in Maryland. Ah, uh, okay. So they got playing Maryland right now. And they have Akron next to us. Kill there by Barber. It, it's interesting. So you. You've had uh, a chance to see Miami a lot over the last two years. Um, and they were a struggling team last year. Definitely a far worse team than the Sharks have been. But they're still not quite over that hump. It, it seems like they are they haven't connected all the dots yet. So. Oh. oh, a couple oh. nice throws. Oh, and almost gets the team tag. The Sharks are down. Pinocchio with the throw. I mean, he's, he's been one of the standouts, but he spent a lot of time in the outline today. And I think the reason why is because Saginaw, Saginaw knew who he was and knew that they needed to target him as they make a team throw again in his direction. Yeah, they know he's the biggest threat. They get him out quick. And there's a good chance he's out early. 
Get that momentum. Get them down that thing. Keep going on the close side. Hits right off the foot. Good team throw there. Down on the tank now, once again. Look here, it goes down. Oh, miss, miss test got dropped. So Miami with four players left. Is that looks like eight or so for Saginaw? Oh, miss test. Just rolled out of it. Three players left for Mike. Reset. That should have been the opportunity to catch both of them. Have a reset for Saginaw. We got Smith. We got Williams. And we got Zeppelin left in for Miami. Nice miss for that deep throw. I mean, Sagnon, let's see what they, where they are in the live feed. Yeah. Nice catch. Tristan Baller, he's a guy that you got to watch out for. Saginaw's up to 12 right now. They're going to move up even more. Miami's at 15 at the moment. They may drop. I actually wouldn't expect them to drop too much. I think that you could see Virginia take a step up in the rankings based on how they've been playing. They're currently at 18, so it depends on who they play in their last game. Um, oh, Stevens with a kill and a big catch by Barber. Now a 5-0 game. One game next round that is not on the main court, but I'm very intrigued by. It. Actually, a couple. You know what? Next round has loads of good games. And, and we talked about this before the tournament even. Q5. Q5. 3.05 p.m. start time. We're past it already, so eh, we're behind. Uh, loaded with good games. Ohio State, Grand Valley. Michigan State, Akron. Akron started the day ranked four. Michigan State started the day ranked one. So that's two, two high-profile teams. Nebraska against Penn State could easily be a game that lands on, on the main court. Like, like, it could have landed on the future court based on how good of a game it could be. Mm -hmm. um, and they both are coming off huge wins. Actually, I would argue, outside of Penn State's win against JMU earlier in the season, that's got to be the biggest win in Penn State program history against Ohio State at Nationals, considering considering the, the, the moment, the situation, what was on the line. Massive win for them. And then also on Nebraska's side, Nebraska beating Ohio by that much. I wouldn't say it's the most, the craziest win for Nebraska in program history, but one of the most impressive. So Absolutely. we're talking about an Ohio team that a couple weeks ago beat Ohio State, and that Ohio State team beat Cincinnati. Sorry to bring it up, but in Cincinnati is, is according to many, a uh, national title favorite. Like they, they're picked to win the title, 39% of uh, NCAA staff. But anyway, not to get carried away with all that talk yet. Back to the action. Number 19, Folsom, has really impressed me for Saginaw. Uh, he's a rookie. He's an athlete, though. And I think if he keeps this up, he could he could end up landing on the all-rookie team at the end of the year. By end of the year, I mean in a week or two when it gets released. And then Edling was a nice throw there, but just doesn't connect. This, this has been a game where it feels like Miami has been right there, but just not able to get over that over that last hurdle to get a couple points. This could easily have turned into a three to two game right now. Miami pulled off, you know, pulled off a couple of those points. Oh, easy catch. Ambrose with a easy catch there. Nice play by him, and he hands it off to Edling. You could tell Miami. At this point, they really have, have kind of dialed in and figured out who their top arms are. And, and they do look comfortable out there for the most part. It's just when they get up to the throw line where I don't see the offensive firepower. Woo! Oh, 
down. There's a kill. Nice job by Miami. Oh, good stop on the ball ball there. He's on that back line too. Pretty impressive. You can see with most of these teams, they want to step up near the ball against that wall there. Another good stop on the wall ball. Yeah, so talking about that wall ball, um, I mean, you've played on these courts. What, do, what are your thoughts on it? Like, what's the biggest thing that teams got to keep an eye on? I definitely feel like it's the wall ball. You can't let it get too carried away. You've got to stop as many of those wall ball throws as you can. When the walls are this close, especially on one side, you just have to stop them as much as you can. And you can't lose ball control. From just the Woo! Christian Ball goes down there. And uh, quietly, Miami has put together a nice point here. They have the lead. And just as I say that, Edwin goes down. Um, commentator's take. Yeah. <laughs> it happens to everyone. A lot of pump and score from Miami. Whew, yeah, God, I think to add on to your point about the wall ball situation, like with the ball this close, that bounce back is, is such a, it can be a part of the game, it doesn't have to be. I think Miami is not really playing to that strength well. They're, they're, they're on their back line so much and they're comfortable there, but that doesn't always benefit them if Saginaw's getting bounce back and getting more and more opportunities in the throw, you know? So that's one thing that I think Saginaw, or, or I mean, I think Miami needs to adjust. Whether it's this game, whether it's in future matchups, uh, they got to get a, a better flow in, in, in getting up and down the court. Did I hit you? Well, uh -huh. Another good point here for Miami. Saginaw is going to be on the tank now. Then again, Saginaw still does have the sailor. Like he's about to throw. Oh, Ooh, what a nice block. good protection by the Michaela. And that's what I was talking about earlier. That sort of teamwork at the front line, blocking for your teammates, that was a staple of Saginaw Valley teams of the past. When they were, I mean, this is one of the most storied programs in college dodgeball history. And they made their bread, their bread and butter was protecting each other, playing smart, and making it as difficult as possible for someone to get them out. And this team is starting to embrace a little bit of that same mentality. They don't have the, they don't have that top end talent that some of the Saginaw teams of the past had, and they don't have the experience, but they're getting there, and I like to see progress in that out of out of this program. Good looks there. Getting close to ten minutes to go in this game. Once again, stick around because we got. We got Ohio State against Grand Valley State coming up next on this court. Uh oh, Ooh, that cross nearly took out the camera. <laughs> that was very close. <laughs> Folks, we got thousands of dollars, dollars just Ooh. sitting there. And I think 13 goes down. Yeah, Allen, Allen is out there. He's stacking out down to three. Do you think that Miami's going to be able to get a point here? Maybe get a little bit of momentum going into. Uh, the end of this one? I feel like they're going to get this one. You got 10 minutes. It, you got it, three guys left. And it, I mean, it matters. I mean, you, you want to get a little momentum, a little bit of confidence. They they play in, in the final round of the day, a very winnable game, but no, not a gimme. And that's against Virginia, a team that's showing up today and, and has turned some heads with the way that they play. So Miami's got to stay on it because that is a huge potential potential change in where the, where they uh, end up in the final seedings so 
big matchup for them, them coming up in two rounds. That's going to be on court four, by the way, which we do have stream of. In fact, that will be streamed on Cincinnati Dodgeball Future Page. Oh, oh my. And he is just in disbelief of what just happened. I think he embarrassed himself too much there. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that happens to the best of us. Gotta hit ground and the foot, so he's safe. Oh, that on the other hand is a kill. Cole Michelle has shown why he was a all-rookie player last season. And a, an assistant captain as a freshman. That's crazy to think about. And now as a sophomore, once again, uh, one of their captains. Goes to hit. Hey, Saginaw looks like, hey, we don't want to give up the point still. We don't care that it's 5-0, make it 6. Fifteen crop throws there. <laughs> He's dealing with a little underhand reset throw. Looks like a little bit oh, of oh, nice throw. Looks like he's doing a little bit of save my arm throwing underhand reset and just get back. Yep. Yep, Miami's now got themselves down to three players. Krupp and Michelle, they are hanging in there. Not. Oh man, if I'm Krupp, I'm looking for like that today. Strike it, that throw's not gonna count. Oh, Michelle looking for the catch. Krupp reset. There. Another throw. Oh, she looked for the catch again. She's got the two women back in. Last throw against the state on Trump. Long throws. They're not going to count either, so that's going to be balls over. They're going to be able to flush this out. Hey, I think it's very these, possible. These are two good catches for this game. You got to remember, Saginaw's only got two players in. It's not like it's a balls over where they got a cheap throw of four people going at them. Right. You know, so. Look, at this moment, you just ah. pick a ball in the team throw and you just look for the catch. See? Skyper was looking for Michelle to throw. I would not put it past her to make a catch in this. Oh, good spot on the reset. Cross coming up alone. Ooh, just barely misses. Oh, and she dropped one, oh. looking for another catch. He's just poised to look for a catch at this instant. Oh, oh no, ground. ground. Here's a catch, ready? Oh, oh nice look there yeah. by Krupp, actually. I love the placement. He didn't put it in the bread basket. He put it high. Make her reach for one or get out of the way. One of the two things happens. You're not going to get caught very, very often in that situation. That's where the throw. That's, that's not going to count. And she makes another. Okay. That one does count, but now oh, no ball. Coming up. Good Ooh. dodge. Good dodge. She's still alive. Calling a timeout. Calling a timeout is called. Five minutes and 11 seconds, it looks like. Five minutes, 11 seconds to go here. Um, first time out called by Miami this half. Hey, the game is probably out of reach. Not probably. The game is surely out of reach at this point. But that, that's not the only thing that matters here. They want to get a little momentum. Like we talked about, a little bit of positive vibes for Miami going into their last game. And on Saginaw's side, hey, we got to get reps here finishing out points. That's a big thing. That's a crucial part. In fact, 
one of the main reasons why they didn't beat Western Michigan at, at the Michigan Dodgeball Cup, finishing out points better. Um, so they're, they're getting wrapped and it's two of their better players that they want to finish this off. Um, so yeah, we will see how this goes here. Once again, Ellie Scheifer, she's one of the best women's players in collegiate dodgeball, has been for a couple years now. Uh, in fact, I think she was number two on the All-American list last season. I could be wrong, don't quote me on it, but I believe she was. I'm pretty sure because yeah. number one was Anna from Miami. Yep, well, I think that they had a one-two sweep. Top two in, in All-American. It was uh, either her or Catherine Mays. I'm not particularly sure on that. And now. All right, so it looks like 1v1 situation. <laughs> I'm not sure how that happened. I think he made it stepped off, stepped over. I don't know. I'm not sure how it's a 1v1. I don't uh, think that's going to count. It's going to be a ball's over. It's going to be Miami's direction. That's done with four minutes. Time is continuing to clock down. JMU up 3 0, still uh, no update there. Michigan State 3 0 against uh, Maryland. Virginia, that one's still at 2 0. Cleveland State against North Georgia, that one's a final, 6 to 1 final. Good for Cleveland State. Let's see how their day's going so far. They also, it was 6 to 1 against Nebraska. They lost that game, but early on in that one, I think it was pretty close. So it's a good sign for them. Anyway, back to that. You know, let's see. Ellie Scheifer, known for her catching, but in this moment, she might have to make a throw. She throws over two balls onto her, onto her Saginaw side, so she is going to have to make one throw. That, that throw not is not going to count. It's a, the ball's over. Yikes. So, ball's over. Oh, we have we do have running clock here, so actually we're under three minutes to go. I want to see this how this point ends. I hope it does end in time. All these stoppages really hurt. With the running clock, someone's going to have to hurry up and get a point two and a half, two and a half to go. All right. So, run, yeah, so that's not a timeout. Watch ticking. Two minutes. Hopefully the fans get what they want here, and we see one of these players win this point. You have only two minutes. Back to make the throw. Now Krupp is going to have to come up and make a throw. He does have both, both players look like they just want to make the catch. <laughs> like he wants the balls over. He said no thanks. Balls over. Quite the anticlimactic finish for I've this game, huh? Not what we want to see as fans. Let's say that. But stick around, folks. Ohio State. Grand Valley State coming up next right here. Got the team forming yeah, that, up over there. That is going to be an electrifying game. Yeah, and when it comes to, in terms of what's on the line with the seedings, it's a massive match. The four, the three and four teams uh, right now in the seed. Um, one of them's going to end up being a top seed and get a pretty good draw. The other one, maybe going to put themselves in a tough spot for Sunday. Championship Sunday. Ellie with the throw does not hit. That throw should count. Yep. And Krupp looks like he just doesn't want to make a throw. I'm going to have to make one. Oh. Ball's over call. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm not sure. That ball looked like it was high. They said ball's over. But so the thing is, if the ball's live, even if the ball's over call happens, the, the the ball's still alive, so it can hit her and she could be out. So that's probably the end of the game. And it looks like it is as they shake hands here.
final score, six to zero in favor of Saginaw Valley State. Honestly, not the kind of match we as commentators no. were expecting. 